Yeah, it's done. Yeah, once again, thanks for your presence. Life giver and the keeper of life. Blessed love, royal family. And let me say blessed love to each and every one continually. Of course, you know, we definitely give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life, Emperor Haile Selassie I. Give thanks for this moment representing the EABID and, of course, this the seventh day of February in the year 2023, the seventh day of February, even as a special day within the order of Again, the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress, 7th of February being the New Year's Day, a day of celebration, a day of joy and new beginning and reflection and looking forward for all growth and all prosperity continuing. So I do welcome you to the Tiger's Nest right here on Radio Anu. And at the moment, we are already streaming to the YouTube platform as well. So we give thanks for all those in cyberspace that has taken the time to come in and sub with us. Of course, you know, the Tiger's Nest is a program that comes to you every Monday, every Tuesday and every Wednesday, and also every Thursday. And it comes to you at 7 p.m. That's Eastern Caribbean time. Uh, sometimes it's aligned with Eastern Standard Time, but at this time, I think it is 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Well, whatever the time is, you should be lodged in to Radio Anu, the international flavor, the universal spice. Of course, the, the website is priestisaacinstitute.com. And of course, those who are not um, a part of the subscription team for the Tiger's Nest. It's a very simple thing to do. You know, in, in time to come, this is going to be a, a priceless commodity to, <laughs> to, to know that you hold a, a, a subscription pass to the nightly radio program the tiger's nest we are you know his mercy enjoyed forever so we are sharing it here with the youtube family and hoping that the youtube family you know gain that, that revolutionary mind frame you know and understand that we have created a hub of our own 
you know, a, a, an institute, university, really, of information and, and all good vibes to make sure everything is in order. So family, a blessed evening. Give thanks and share the link. Let a, a, an individual know what you are listening to. And in the case of those who would be watching on uh, the YouTube, let, let them know what you're looking at because I have a few things to show you. In fact, that's why we decided to touch upon the YouTube tonight. And of course, you know, we, 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 we always happy, you know, wherever you hear us, you're hearing us. So even the radio and family, I'm telling you, I have a few things that I want to express visually this evening as it relates to the new year. You would have seen the title of this discussion especially those on the, the YouTube, you would see. So where does the Bobo Shanti, the 7th of February, New Year's come from? Now, of course, it's, it's something that is unique, isn't it? Something that is different. It's something that may even appear strange to some. So, of course, you know, an answer to the question will definitely be necessary before we go there man let's just give thanks yes let's give thanks for previous night you know what i mean what a soothing program we have how many of you were in the house what a soothing program we had the honorable kess westmore and myself piloting off the the brand new you know sit down reasoning the house, welcome to the house of priests. And of course, we don't come to count cows. We come to drink the sincere milk. And that's our mantra, our, our motto going forward. So it was a wonderful reasoning. We were speaking about the Melchizedek order. And of course, it's a discussion that could go on and on. And you obviously saw that there are different depths to the reasoning, different depths to the discussion. So that is why... You know, we touched it on different levels. We went into the man Melchizedek for those who were not there. And we also, you know, digged up some scriptures that highlighted this soul Melchizedek without mother, without father. And we went into the order as we knew it, or know it, I should say. And of course, the different levels of it from the altar to the floor. Yes, what a wonderful mm -hmm, sit down it was. And I'm looking forward for this upcoming Sunday. So family, it is every Sunday on Radio Anuga. That's the hub. Every Sunday at 8 p.m., we are talking about welcome to the house of priests. And of course, reasoning is much better than preaching. Myself, the Honorable Kess Westmore, and of course, the house of priests give thanks, you know, different priests specifically, and ones of the Congress in general will be passing through to add to the reasoning and the discussion. And let me also remind you of Thursday evening. <laughs> yes, I, I'm talking about Rastafari, Rasta Roundtable, issues surrounding the Rastafari movement and our previous program, what a topic that was. And I was happy that we could at least have broken the ice with that topic, that discussion. It was obvious even amongst ourselves that although you could see each and every one of us would have been interested in the subject area and would, would have done some level of research, you know, and you could have heard, you, you would have heard that even in some of the testimonies that were given. But at the same time, because it's not a common discussion amongst Rastafari, I'm talking about evolution. It was just a joy to see how it was so easily accepted, even from those who were in the chat, you know, how it was easily accepted. And it, it just shows us that we have a mature mind, at least those who are in this frame here. And that's happy. You know, every now and again, one or two people obviously get out of their skin, but it's obvious that those who are in tune to this space that we have created here, you know, are those with a mature a sense of thinking and you can bring sensible discussions. That's why you're here. Man, if you're gonna, if you if you knew where we're gonna go tonight, eh? Just give me a moment, man. <laughs> we're going deep and we're going very high. 
we're talking about the 7th of February. So you, when you come to the nest, you expect heights. You know, in fact, you actually don't expect to, to, to hear how many cows are in the barn. You expect to get the richest of milk that comes from Hathor, Het Heru, that she uses to nourish the king. What you say? All right, very good. Now we're going to go straight into it. No dilly and dallying tonight. We're just saying a blessed uh, new year to each and everyone. Well, we never dilly and dally, by the way. The old people say, don't dally. Mm -hmm. Nothing but nothing. Brother Vaughn has a song, one of them ancient midnight songs. Hey, brother, don't dally. Don't dally. Don't, don't be wasting no time. You just keep moving. So, yeah, so this Thursday, make sure you join us, Radio Anu, myself, Brother Ras Iser, and Koma Dredda, and uh, Brother Otis Henry was with us previous Wednesday. Let us see if he, you know, might pay us a visit again this, not Wednesday, but Thursday mm -hmm, upcoming. So, yes, let's let's just get to it. The It is nothing too mystic, nothing too far-fetched. It's just that, you know, they have different New Year's. You know, you have... Um, different time frames where you would, uh, if you want to say, they have different time frames where individuals would, let me just make sure everything is clear here. Let me see something. Is everyone hearing me clearly here on this end as far as the, where we are on the, the YouTube is something, let me just make sure here. I just want to make sure everyone is hearing me correctly. Mm -hmm. How is it looking here? Am I coming through? Okay. All right. Pardon me, family. All right. Because to be honest, something looks like it stick a bit, but let's just make sure everything is good. All right. Looks positive to me. So. So the 7th of February, okay, give thanks, everyone say they can give. The 7th of February, you know, what, what is interesting to, to, to what, what really caught my interest when I first understood the 7th of February thing. Now, first of all, even before we go too far, the reason why, before we even go into all of this explanation, the reason why or where Bubble Shanti get the 7th of February New Year from, we get it from the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles. So I, I think that's a, a simple and straightforward way to put that. We get that from the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles. No, so so we're not putting ourselves in a position where we're trying our utmost best to figure each and everything out. Well, well, maybe I should keep myself out of that. I like to try to figure everything out now that I look at it. But if you were listening to the reasoning previous night with me and the Honorable Kess Westmore, you would have noticed that the Melchizedek order, that's what we were talking about. The Melchizedek order has different levels. And the Melchizedek order at the same time is an order that it's a priesthood order. It's a priestly order. And it's the order that governs all creation, whether you are a priest or not. Whether you're a bird or a leaf, it's the order of Melchizedek. So within the Melchizedek now that we as Rastafari have has accepted as Melchizedek, you know, we even mentioned the Lion of Judah within that discussion. And we can go deeper. But of course, as Bobo Shanti, we see the Christ energy, the crystal spirit of the Melchizedek in the honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards. We ain't talking religion here. That is why now nobody can deny what I just said. Eh? No, nah, man. Because it's reality. Everyone knows who King Emmanuel is. Once you're not talking no religion, not religion. We're talking reality. Everybody knows that's a superhuman being amongst us. So the order that this creator came with, the covering of the white and the Sabbath, the, the science of the colors and the black over white ever right and never white, white over black at all. You know, the, 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 the order of the fasting given, even our Lenten period is coming up very soon. Even the blessing with the, the heartical hand, the left hand. Anybody you see doing the blessing thing anyway and he's not Bobo, his right hand they use. 
So, well, it's the right, it is the right hand. The two hands are the right hand. None of them is the wrong hand. None of the hands are the wrong hand. So the right hand is the right hand. But the left hand is not left. We never left it no way. That's why most people cannot write with the left hand. Because it's not the right hand, it's the wrong hand. <laughs> and the right hand is the hand you write with. Listen, this is some serious, this is a serious game they're playing on us with the words, etymology, and just confusion in general. Hmm? Which bird you know is right, right wing, right wing and left wing and them kind of thing. It has a left wing, but it doesn't fly with the right wing alone. It's like you just write with your right hand in it, don't life grab, um, pardon me, right with your left hand. I'm two-handed. Huh? What did you say? I'm two-handed. I hope so. It's two hands you have. I mean, you should be two-handed. Hmm? And, and you can kick with your right foot and you can't kick with your left foot. Now, this may not be your, your fault, really, because we were, we were trained to be like that. I've always spoken about, about even here in the Caribbean. Some, some of us, not us personally, but I know I see, were, were, were beaten by the teacher, the old granny, you know what I mean? Who born a few days after the emancipation, God bless her soul, you know? Some of us get the rule of break in our hands. Yeah, because we're trying to write with the left hand. Come to realize all of that come from slavery. They, they used to ban up your left hand. So you, so you have to use the so-called right hand, which is the right hand. But why concentrate on that hand and leave away the other hand? It's not just the hand, it's the side of the goodie, the left side of the body, spiritual side. They understand the science here. Are you with me? So when you see King Emmanuel come now, when we say the Queen, Prince and princess come out of Egypt, Ethiopia, stretch forth our hands. Let's go right, stretch forth your right hand. No, you stretch forth your heartical hand or the so-called left hand, but we never left it nowhere. It's right there with us. We're not hand decap. Mm, no, mm -hmm. hand decap. What is hand decap? Got to decapitate your hand. Although you have the two of them, only one working because you're right handed. But King Emmanuel teach us. Prince and princess come, Ethiopia shall stretch forth, left hand as they call it, gone up, stretch out for at least a couple, three minutes there, a good three minutes before you put it down again. That's a great strength. When you bless, no bubble blessing with the right hand, you bless with the other right hand, the heartical hand. Not the left, we have left it nowhere. You don't turn to the right on the altar. You turn to the so-called left, like the dervish. And count how many times you do it in a service. It's deep. It's heights. So, so all of what was given to us as instruction, whether it's not to sweep after six o'clock, yeah, but you can sweep after midnight. <laughs> Sounds like some real, <laughs> some spell business. Eh? And you don't sweep. You can say what you want. Eh? You don't sweep to the, to the north and you don't sweep to the east, but you sweep to the west and you sweep to the south. And even when you rest, you put your head to the east and to the north and all of that. This is Melchizedek order, you know. This is King Emmanuel order. Now, what I'm saying is that you may not be able to explain all of that and why it is done. And there is so much more behind of that. But you should be able to explain the main thing. The man Melchizedek himself. So even if you can't explain in detail everything about the order, so, so Baba, what do you mean? I need mango. What wrong with mango? And then the, the camera in your face and the microphone in your mouth. And you're supposed to have an intelligent answer to this. And some ones who say they follow Melchizedek because they don't understand why he said leave the mango. They don't understand why. They don't understand why. I know them personally. They do not understand why. They can't explain it. So they bow and eat what Melchizedek said not to eat. The firm man, if you say you're, you're checking for Melchizedek, you can't understand every star that hung up in the heavens. Come on. 
but you're supposed to, you're supposed to comprehend the God that hung them in the heavens. Just using the poetic terms. So you may not be able to fully explain everything about Melchizedek order to its detail as you're not the author, but at least you know who Melchizedek is and how he explain your rapid term and how he tell you the rapid. They don't have no other term like the bubble term. Even other Rastafari, no disrespect, with all the love in the world. Is, is Emmanuel the is Emmanuel rap Rastaman that rap term and have you know? I'm not saying this in no disrespect now. Please, I hope nobody get it wrong. Because you know, there was a time Rasta never really rapped the head as such. And it's Emmanuel or this bubble for me. See a man with a rap head. Is is Emmanuel pick me that? You know that. Now a lot of Rastas rap their head. I don't, hey, nothing wrong. Because you may say, hey, a turban is an ancient thing. I agree. Turban is an ancient thing. But look how the Ethiopian Orthodox Church wrapped their turban. Look how the Islamic wrapped their turban. And there's different levels of that too. Look how the Sikhs wrapped their turbans. Look how the Hindus wrapped their turban. And look at King Emmanuel turban. All them turban different. So it's not just turban. King Emmanuel turban is a specific turban that you don't find nowhere else. Ah, the specific wrap, the, the length of cloth and how he tell us to put it around your shoulder um, clockwise and then anti-clockwise. You think it is a joke? <laughs> yeah, and it come out different. So when a, another brother as Rastafari take up the turban that he see Emmanuel wrap and wrap it, Hey, I feel away now. I feel away, but one should at least understand that it's not just a turban I have on. I have an Emmanuel wrapping, wrap Emmanuel turban. Because you could desire, you could, you could do it another way. You could wrap it and make it look like, you know what I mean, one of them Arab sheik. You know, they have different ways. But that specific style is not just a turban. It's King Emmanuel turban. I'm just showing you. So, so all of that comes down to the Melchizedek order. You know, as I said, Lent is coming in the type of fast and things ask the left keep aside from and so uh, the order. So, so I'm saying all of that now to return to uh, the 7th of February. And the Spirit just tell me to heal the man, Honorable Priest Diamond. Yeah, man, in the Bahamas, give thanks, my Lord. Just that's a spirit, just come there. Thanks again. So, the 7th of February now. What's interesting about the month of February is that of all the months, it is the month. That's, that's one thing that stands out about February. You know, the ancient Bagalaga would call February February because they don't know it's Black History Month, African History Month, and they give us the shortest month of the year. To remember yourself. Good. And of course, you know, Valence Wine totally read that out too. So what's interesting is that February is 28 days outside of the leap year. Follow me good. So what's so special about that? Well, the other months are 30 days. The other months are 31 days. And February... Not <laughs> February, but February is 28 days. Now, of course, you know that the, the science of the, the, the year, the lunar year inside of the solar year is 13 months. And not even in the sense of the modern day Ethiopian calendar with all due respect with that short month, but no, you have 13 months of 28 days. And this is to show you now, you see again the cycle of the moon within, because within the solar year of 365, you'd get approximately 13 moons, full moon, new moon, 
because the moon has that 27.7 to 28 day cycle. Please follow me. So that's why the moon, the moon was really what people used to use to mark the month. That's why moon is month. M O O N moon. M O N T H moon month. Like T H like like the five and the TH, fifth, seven and TH, seventh, moon and TH, moon, <laughs> month. Yeah, so the word month really comes from moon. When it's new moon, full moon, it's, it's the moon. And the moon has that 28 day cycle, just like the real month has the 28 day cycle where you would get 13 months in, in a year. That's why we already, we already deciphered that right here in, in Little or that you know, so, so when they're paying you now, depending on how you get paid, especially those that get paid uh, by, where's the trick now? I think it's when you get paid by the week. Yeah, the, the trick is when you get paid by the week, especially when you get paid by the week, you know? So what has happened now? You're getting paid by this week here and they add it up to the month. It's a, it's a kind of tricky thing. So really at the end of the year, you you really get short paid a month because it's 12 months per the year when they're still fucking you by the week here. 12 months per the year and the 13 months is just left out. They, left, they leave it out all the time. Remember in certain buildings, they don't even have a 13th floor. So the 13 month is left out. Then now at the end of the year, they give you a bonus. Now that bonus that they're giving you, right, is your money in a man. That bonus that they're giving you is that extra month that they rob you of. And then interestingly, they're giving you this bonus at a time when most of you gonna give that same bonus back to Santa Claus. So it's a well, you know, organized bank robbery that these fellas has set up using astrology and numerology and technology as well. You see how far the conversation gone? So that the month of February again, hmm, with its cycle of 28. And of course, 28 is divided into what? Four sevens. Remember, we were just speaking about numbers uh, previous week, uh, last week, really. Last week, because that's the last week. You ain't gonna no more week coming here. We're gonna be stronger from now on. So last week, you know, we were talking about the number 33. Last week, no more weeks coming. We were talking about the number eight and the number nine. So now we're looking at seven here. And so February is divided into seven, 14, 21, 28. You follow me? 7, 14, 21, 28. Family, this is pen and pad session here. Class, real thing. Because the 7th now of February, see, it start there on the 7th. And of course, you see, they try to play with it. Remember, King Emmanuel said the New Year's is from the 7th to the 14th of February. You know what happened on the 14th of February. Yeah. Fallen swine, the day of blood and milk, the day when little old Cupid in his little naked self coming through with his bow and arrows to stick people in their hearts. Those of you watching YouTube, press, press, press the thumbs up button for us, please, and get some more people in the conversation. Let's not be selfish here now. Let's share this. Everyone needs to know the truth. So Valen Swine, because that's why they give you roses. Hmm. Thorns still will make you bleed. Rushy crucian business. So he's coming to stick up your heart. You and your lover's heart on a stick. And then you fall in love because a little baby naked angel with wings take his arrow and drive it through your heart. Well, well, if you understand the 14th day of February from the old Roman time, when they used to lock women out of uh, out of the city and and they 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 used to go and hit them over the head like the caveman uh, style you see 
on the movies and bring them in. Real thing. This is a day of slaughter. Little children. That's why it's a day of blood and milk. Red and white. Santa Claus and these people are of the same order. That's why he wears red and white. That's why when he comes through on Christmas Eve, he looking for cookies and milk. The day of blood and milk. So all of this thing, all of these things are well wrapped up into one. And of course, if you take time to study fairy tale folly days and nursery crime, I think it's the execution. If it's not the execution, is what the firing squad. We 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 whatever the version is, you can go on our website and go to the area entitled shop you see all of our um, seminars and online lectures and documentaries there you should seek out the fairy tale folly days and nursery crimes and you get a clear comprehension of what we're talking about so as always family listen to me they know how to align themselves halloween and all of these um, folly days that they come with they know how to align themselves with the astronomical clock and the opening of portals. King Emmanuel will teach us that the new year is from the 7th of February to the 14th day of February. It's right here in the black supremacy, which I have in my hand, which I intend to read something from it in a moment now. The name Emmanuel as decoded in the King James version of the Bible. That says Shakespeare. Well, he decoded his name in it. So the name Emmanuel mentioned three times in the King James Version of the Bible. Three times. Twice in the book of Isaiah and once in the book of Matthew. In Isaiah, it's chapter 7, verse 14. Numerology. In Isaiah, the name Emmanuel The name Emmanuel is seen for the first time in the book, in chapter 7. 7 is Emmanuel's number. Verse 14, 7 and 14. 7 plus 7 is 14. Please be with me. Then the next time that the name Emmanuel is mentioned in the Bible is in the same Isaiah. And don't overlook this prophet, Isaiah, the messianic prophet himself. And it's mentioned in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 8. Numbers again. We already did the program on the number 8, infinite, with no debate. The first and the last in 8. Adoration, man. Selassie, I agree. So remember the 8 and its side is the symbol of infinity draw it all day long race car turn around his race car Allah turn back with Allah eight turn around is eight you, you you follow me eight seven six five four three two one eight and come down the line you remember that when we added the the, the mathematical uh, multiplic multiplication table of eight that's a program we did last week the 88, listen to me family, we're talking about the 7th of February. The 88 constellations in the heavens. There are 88 recognized constellations in the heavens. So, so Isaiah 8 verse 8 mentioning Emmanuel for the second time in the book is clear numerology. Clear science. And if you understood who wrote the Bible, and if you understood who translated the Bible, you wouldn't be surprised. It is not hard to put some numbers together just to make a point in it. So in the eighth verse of the eighth chapter, how many of you remember the, the program we did on the, the, the cover of Shakespeare's book there? Um the 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 the, the about two or three weeks ago and highlighting the longitude and latitude of the pyramids just by using the right four right angle triangles because of the inscription on the book. So if all of that could be done, you could do it in the, in the Bible too. 
Just trying to, you know, broaden the thinking. Hope no one is offended. Just broadening the thinking. Let's think out of the box. So again, let's take our time. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 8. Emmanuel. And the third time Emmanuel is mentioned in the Bible is the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 2, 3, 23. 1, 2, 3. The first book in the New Testament, too. The first chapter, not just Matthew, chapter 1. Chapter 1 in the New Testament. 23rd verse. Virgin give birth and his name is Emmanuel. One, two, three. So 714, Emmanuel. 8 verse 8, Emmanuel. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, you know, the third time it's mentioned in the book. Emmanuel mentioned three times in the Bible and the third time it's mentioned is mentioned in 1, 2, 3. Matthew 1, 23. The second time is the constellations of the heavens, the, the infinite, 8 verse 8. Come on. And the first time is the perfection of the seven, seven and 14. Then 21, 28, Isaiah 7 and 14, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. So the 7, 14 again, the February, from, from the 7 to the 14, then again, you see how the bloody of the 14. Start early by slaughtering. Now, when you observe, let me read something here before I go too far. I have in front of me the Black Supremacy book. And I want to read in the book, this is a, the chapter entitled, this is chapter one. Well, it's called chapter one, but, uh, well, it's chapter one, but there are other let letters and correspondence before chapter one, Black Supremacy and its Commandments. And it says here, the headlight of the Ethiopia International Congress began on March 1958. And today, 20 years after, which is 1978, the Congress has 14 priests, 60 prophets, and 14 empresses. Now, King Emmanuel is a mystic, mystic being. And sometimes we have to pay attention to even the simple things that he's saying. Let's read here in chapter three, hear what it says here. On the 1st of August, 1978, a lot of things in this book, seems to rally around 1978. He says here, on the 1st of August, uh, I guess, on the 1st of August, 1978, make 140 years since the shackles come off of black man's foot in 1834. So, so this 1978 family, this is quite, Interesting. Let's let's keep with this. 1978. Some of you were born in 1978. <laughs> yeah, 1978. Interesting year. So this is the year that, in a sense, King Emmanuel make a little census and put it in the black supremacy. And King Emmanuel say in 1978, he had um, 60 prophets, 14 priests. Wow and 14 empresses. Now, family, that's 88 people. Now, for whatever reason, King Emmanuel would have highlighted this in the book. He highlighted it, 60, 14, and 14. And now, you know, you could say, well, I mean, if he didn't count them the week after, maybe, he'd have, you know, 92. I understand. I know, I know. But what I'm looking at here, is that he's highlighting the year, follow me in the family, 1978. 
Then he goes on in the same book to say that the 17th of August, the same 1978, is 144 years. Listen to them numbers there. 144 years since the shackles come off of Blackbird Food. Why is it he highlight that now? 144, everyone know that 144 is a spiritual number. 144,000 elect saints of the children of Israel according to the book of Revelation. And you know, we bust, uh, you know, the Israelites, we don't show you that the Israelites is actually the speed of light because the speed of light is actually 140 and 4,000 minutes of arc per second. When it travels in a circle, it's 186,000 miles per second when it's traveling in a straight line. But because it, you know, going around the globe, it moves in an arc. So the speed of light family is 100. The speed of light, the halo that's around the head of the holy people and saints. The speed of light is 144,000. Minutes of arc per second, just like 144,000 elect of God shall stand before the Lamb on Mount Zion. It's, it's high science, you know, put in allegorical form, which still is literal as well, because we are the Israel lights. That's us. 144 petals of light is what the chakra emanates. We have done that program as well, just about a month or, 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 or so ago. So when you observe that now, in his whole mystic and understanding, the 144,000 is, is symbolic of the, 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 the chosen souls, again, the speed of light, and light in general, and the halo, the holy ones, is deep. So 144 years now, according to this book here, August, uh, 1st of August, Emancipation Day, 1978, according to what King Emmanuel is citing to us, is 144 years. The same 1948, so for, uh, uh, pardon me, 1978. So for whatever reason, he's highlighting again numerology with 1978. 144. And then now, he's highlighting numerology with the amount of people that are with him on the hill. 1978, again, 88 people. Everything here, cosmic, family, please don't lose me. All right. Now, I want to highlight, even before, you know, even before I go there, you know, I, I, I want to highlight a few things that really stands out as it relates to the 7th day of February. That's a few little things. You know that the 7th day of February, 1974, is when uh, Grenada, would have received its independence. A few interesting things took place. And even King Edward, you know, uh, King Edward II of England, he became the first uh, English Prince of Wales in 1301. This is King Edward and uh, Prince of Wales. And uh, he's referred to as the Black Prince, King Edward. And he became king on the 7th of February. Okay, good. Now, I'm coming forward to that. One thing about the 7th of February. Let me just show this to the family. The 7th of February is an astrological uh, rebirth, like a renaissance, astrologically. I'm speaking as someone who studies astronomy. 
So this is why the Chinese New Year, you will notice that the Chinese New Year, it would fall between January and February over the years. Like this year, I think it was the 22nd of January, just past the Chinese New Year. And the Chinese New Year, um, this year, it was the year of, uh, uh, I'm not even too sure, I think it may be the horse or something like that. No, it's the year of the rabbit. It's the year of the rabbit. The, the year of the tiger would have passed not too long ago. That's the year God give thanks for the striped cat. Now, so if you look through the years, you notice the Chinese New Year fall. Uh, the, in 1937, it was the 11th of February. Uh, 1938, it was the 31st of January. In 1939, it was the 19th of February. Look at this family. In 1940, the Chinese New Year was the 8th of February. Look at this. So, so what that's showing you, it was very close to King Emmanuel's New Year. The, in 1943, it was the 4th of February. 1946, it was the 1st of February. 1947, just like this year, it was the 22nd of January. Look at this one here. 1951, it was the 6th of February. 1954, it was the 3rd of February. Now listen to me. What? Follow me, family, please. What is happening here is that obviously a Chinese people are utilizing the moon for constructing the beginning of their new year, rightly so, the, or at least the beginning of the month, because it's just like Easter and Good Friday is the moon they use, you know. That's why these days always fall on a different day because it has to be um, first Wednesday after the full moon or second Wednesday after the full moon, however the Ash Wednesday goes, but it's some Wednesday after the full moon or new moon, something like that. So the moon doesn't become new and full on dates, these monthly dates that we have and January the 25th and, and March the 18th and all of that. It has its cycle. Uh, it has its own clock, but that is captured in nature. Not the clock on the wall and our calculator and the calendar and none of these different things. Please follow me, family, please. So it's obvious that the Chinese understand this science, but they're still balancing it, obviously, from the moon and when the moon comes into action. So this is why the date will be different every year. But, but not too far out of the range. So the Chinese New Year is not gonna, you're not gonna find it. Mm, maybe there are rare cases in March and, and in December. I think there, there may have been a rare case, but if not, well, no, I'm not seeing any here. Okay. So many times they come close to February the 7th. And on a few occasions, they actually hit several, uh, February, pardon. Seventh. Now, one of those years where the Chinese New Year was February the 7th was in 1978. <clears throat> I ain't going to see this program until I feel that the audience understand what I'm trying to explain. something was taking place in the heavens properly around the time of 1978. And I'm going to show you exactly what. I'm going to show you what King Emmanuel means when he say. That a one shall come amongst us that can read the stars. In 1978, remember King Emmanuel just said in the Black Supremacy, in 1978, I had 88 people on the hill with me. 88 
is the amount of constellations in the heavens. Each man there and woman represent a star, a constellation. That same year, 1978, King Emmanuel showing you a listen. According to time, this is 144 years since the emancipation of slavery. And interestingly, when you read even in the black supremacy, because some of them, the date was changed to 1988 and different things because of the time. But when King Emmanuel highlights that this is the new year, 7th of February, 1978, you know, follow me. This was the year when the Chinese New Year actually perfectly aligned with King Emmanuel's 7th of February, New Year, 1978. The same 1978 where he highlighted 88 people in the Congress. 144 years since emancipation of slavery. So something special about 1978 and we ain't done. That's not the, no man, that wasn't the punchline there at all. We're getting there. But I'm just showing you that, I mean, the Chinese New Year, with all respect to it, it doesn't have a fixed date. So it jumps from here to there, here to there. We have a fixed date. It's the 7th of February. 7th. 14, 21, 28, the 7th of February. So the Chinese New Year, in all of its bobbing and weaving at a specific time, every now and again aligns with our New Year. And it just so happened that it aligned with our New Year after many decades in 1978. All right. Now, let's watch this. As I explained, you know, there are many things that happened on the 7th of February over the years. Even Papa, Papa Doc Duvalet, all of these people, he, he, he fled from Haiti on that date. Interesting date. But this is what I consider to be something to look into. In 1979, on the 7th of February, so what does that mean? That's the end of the, 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 we gone from 1978 now into a brand new year. Pluto moves inside Neptune's orbit for the first time since Ida was discovered. <laughs> this is not just 1979. This is the 7th of February, 1979. So in other words, the 7th of February, 1978 was very unique because for the first time in many decades, the Chinese lunar year, and it's not the Chinese lunar year, no, it's whatever science they are following that they're expert in is perfectly aligning with King Emmanuel's new year. And again, that year is highlighted in this book with the mystics of the constellation numbers and even down to the speed of light, 114 for elect. These are celestial things, family. And I am showing you something happening in the celestial heavens not just in 1978 or around 1979. This is NASA's report on the 7th of February, family. Listen, on the 7th day of February, not the 6th, 5th, 8th, nor 9th, on the 7th day of February, King Emmanuel New Year. 
Pluto, the, the ninth planet, moves inside of Neptune's orbit for the first time since Ida was discovered. I really hope the congregation get the depths of this. If not, I will show you. You see, family, the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament show it his handiwork. Day on today, utter its speech, family, there's no book nobody can pull that is greater than the heavens. Not even cometic hieroglyphs can compare. So that's where it comes from. That is where it's, com it's coming from. And, 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 you know, maybe I, uh, I'm expressing that with just a little passion because, you know, I understand that people talking about who's literate and who not literate. Can you read the heavens? I remember when I was about maybe eight, nine, laying down on the hood of my father's, them big old mobile he used to have, and I would be looking at the sky. In those days, the sky was darker, and you could see all them stars, the Milky Way, and I didn't even know where to start. And now today, if I go out and look up in the sky, I can almost point out anything for you. And it's not just about pointing it out yet. It's about studying the movements of the heavens and the, the mechanics of the heavenly bodies to be able to even bring a presentation like this. Pluto family is the ninth planet. We know that. Of course, you know, they tried to rob Pluto of its planetary status for whatever reason. And you see, that's science for you because some of the scientists still disagree with that. Now, the orbit of Pluto is interesting. Neptune is the eighth planet, follow me. Uranus is the seventh planet. Now, Saturn is the sixth. So Saturn, six, Uranus, seventh, Neptune, eight. And family, you should take the time now to understand we have a comprehensive astronomy program eh, for the young little ones, I'm telling you. I'm sure if any one of you watching have little children that are part of our astronomy program, you would have seen them even, uh, um, not to use the term playing, but utilizing this app here and other apps we would have given to them uh, um, so that they could have a good feel of, of the heavens and astronomy in general. Don't be afraid to teach your children astronomy it's 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 science that's why we teach them heavy science in you know, astronomy biology of course african history and heritage it's a must get the mind you know awakened to to a bigger dimension of thinking this rockefeller system of education ain't going to do it it cannot cut it for these intelligent minds that we have here today so Pluto now, although Pluto is the ninth planet, those of you who are watching in YouTube, you would observe that Pluto itself, you know, has a very mystic, uh, elliptic as such in comparison to the other planets. So that is why Pluto in itself, if you observe this good, you could see uh, as the time is moving on, Pluto is going further and further away basically from the other planets. But you see, what is interesting about Pluto is that at a specific time, Pluto basically dips into the elliptic of Neptune and actually becomes the eighth planet and Neptune becomes the ninth planet. Listen, family, there's a reason eh, why they disqualify Pluto from being a planet. It's more than just, I mean, it's, it's, it's some deep, um, secret uh, society vibration. Let me show you. Do you know when they discovered Pluto? They discovered Pluto in 1930. 
Now we all understand what was taking place in 1930. Outside of the Great Depression, <laughs> you know why the United States got, got depressed? That's the year of the coronation of Emperor Haile Selassie I, 1930. And in 1930, they discovered the smallest planet. Follow me now, man. The year that the emperor was discovered. Because everything, as above, so below. Eh? As above, so below. As above, so below. And they discovered the, the, the little planet Pluto. Name it after a Disney character, a dog. Eh? They call it Pluto. You see, it's a level of disrespect and it's still a level of Freemasonry expression, you know. Yeah. Because remember when Haile Selassie get crowned, this is not funny, you know. When Haile Selassie get crowned, we don't know it's God on his throne, isn't it? God on his throne. Now everybody know when you spell, um, when you turn God back where you get the word dog. Yeah. So when they discover the small planet Pluto, which is symbolic of the God, they name it Pluto after a dog. Oh, you think is a joke, eh? Name the most famous dog you know. Who? Rin Tin Tin, no, man. Guess again. Ah, Lassie. No, Lassie, no. <laughs> Where they get the name Lassie from? Come on, family, think. Remember, you know, the, 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 the name God. All you have to do is turn God around and you get dog. You think them people really love the true God? Just like how they use their own people and magnify them in characters. They, they take our heroes and bring them down to some levels in the entertainment world. You know? I always believe Winnie the Pooh is, is a level of disrespect to Winnie Mandela. You, know? you don't know we decipher these things heavy. So, so I'm showing you now that to, to name the planet after a dog. Come on, the, the, these wicked astronomers understand that this planet represents the coming of the night, you know, the God, you know. All of that, the night business represents the amount of uh, children that his majesty's mother passed, who didn't die at birth or die a little after birth before he, the emperor himself, was born. You know, the ninth planet, that's how the story go. And he's the smallest, the little man, the ninth planet, and they name it after a dog, Pluto. Because, you know, again, God turned around his dog. And Lassie is a play on the word Selassie, straight up. Then people don't care. Now, the high science of Pluto, again, is this. Pluto has a very interesting relationship with Neptune. That at a specific time, Pluto, you see Pluto here? Pluto is on the elliptic of Neptune. So at a specific time, Pluto would go miles, miles, miles away from Neptune. And then it will just come closer, maybe not to Neptune, the planet, but to Neptune's elliptic. The elliptic is the, the track that Neptune runs on. So Neptune runs on a track, that's its elliptic. Good. Now, Pluto is interesting because Pluto, at a specific time, goes into Neptune's elliptic, making Neptune the ninth planet and making Pluto the eighth planet. Follow that. That's deep. So, so that's deep, eh? Man, that is some heavy stuff, especially if you could take astronomy and, and put it into theology. Yeah, man. It's like Abraham meeting Melchizedek. Pluto, the ninth planet, was the ninth planet all the time. But just on one specific day, Pluto come and goes on Neptune elliptic and then crosses over and makes Neptune the ninth planet and Pluto the eighth planet. But it doesn't stay too long, Pluto. 
as the the eighth planet before it goes back out into the ninth planet region and then go far back out into space and come back home you, you understand what i'm saying good now when was the last time Pluto did this here here what we just read in when they observe pluto passing into neptune elliptic they considered it to be the first time they ever see this since both neptune and pluto were discovered so all the time they don't discovered pluto and neptune almost a hundred years plus they never see pluto cross into neptune elliptic and then become the eighth planet that was the first time they saw that you you remember when they saw that do you remember when that happened when pluto for the first time do you remember when pluto for the first time crossed over the elliptic of the eighth planet neptune and it pluto the ninth planet became the eighth planet and Neptune become the ninth planet. Do you remember when that happened? It happened on a day like today. It happened on the 7th of February. Not just any old year. 1979. Hmm. Which basically seal up a full year from the 7th of February, 1978. What happened then? That was the year when King Emmanuel 7th of February was perfectly aligned with the science that the Chinese use to decide their new year. And that was the first time the Chinese new year was the 7th of February, 1978, in many, many, many decades. It just so happened, coincidentally, to align with our new year in 1978. And so mystically, a year after that, the same 7th of February, 1979, the first time in the heavens, Pluto, that ain't no joke thing, brother. Pluto crossing over Neptune elliptic. And in between them time, King Emmanuel say, I have 60 prophets. 14 priests, 14 empresses. That's 88 people. And that's the amount of constellations in the heavens. And this year, the same 1978, first of August, would make 144 years since the emancipation. And we don't know 144,000 speed of light, minutes of our Israelites saved soul from the earth. Everything is celestial. And all of that happened in 1978, crowned by the 7th of February, 1978, and Pluto's crossing, 7th of February, 1979. Yeah, family, if thanks to the new year, if the point is not clear, I would advise you just check this video and those who are subscribers, you will get your copy again. Holy man, you're alive. Still I see I. Ja, Rastafari. Blessed love.